Hey, welcome back to True Story with John Gibson. Today we got an amazing guest, none other than the New York badass himself, Phil Baroni. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's up, Phil? Thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, li- glad to be here, man. It's absolutely my pleasure to have you. Uh, been a fan for a long time. Been really excited for this interview, and I, I think I got some good questions for you. Uh, kind of, kind of highlight some highs in your career, man. I think you've had a storied career for sure. And a lot Thanks. to share. Yeah. Um, let me first, if I can, I wanted to learn a little bit about, because I think like, you know, I've read about it, but I, I haven't heard a lot of interviews kind of detail this, but can you tell a little bit about or expand about like you grew up wrestling, right? I know you went all the way on to college division one. Can you talk a little bit about that base? Yeah. I, I wrestled my whole, since seventh grade, I wrestled. Wrestling was my, uh, I, I loved it, man. I, that's all I wanted to do growing up is, is wrestle. I played football and stuff in high school, but, but I, I wanted to I didn't play football in college, but I wanted to wrestle. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it was fighting, you know? It was fighting, basically, you know? So For sure. I wanted to be the baddest guy on the planet. I wanted to be the toughest. So, you know, wrestling was, was what I was into. I, I loved it. Yeah. Do you think that was always – I mean, I guess it's – I guess so. That was always in you, huh? You were always competitive? Yeah. I've, I've always wanted to – ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be – a. The, the, the fighting champion, whether it was boxing or, or pro wrestling or whatever I, I wanted. It. That was just what I always wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I understand. I think that's in a lot of us. I, it was in me. So I, I relate to that a million percent. Um, it's so crazy. And, and I guess I'll get to it in a minute, but how did you transition from division one wrestling into MMA? Man, I, I was doing MMA when I was d- division one wrestling. My, my freshman, my 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 my, my f- freshman sophomore year took fifth and second in the nation. You know what I mean? As, mm-hmm. as good right. as say as like DC, I was supposed to be really good, but then I got into the MMA and I, and I wanted to do that. So mm-hmm. I I wouldn't practice as hard as I should have been, and I'd be training jujitsu and shit, and coaches would be getting pissed at me. You know what I mean? Right. I ended up knocking out my coach, my my, my college wrestling coach, wow. I brought in the big gloves, and I had to transfer. <laughs> one day tom ryan he's the coach of ohio state now. yeah yeah i know tom ryan yeah 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 he was saying baloney man what the fuck you doing all this fighting shit you know what's this fighting gonna get you blah 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 and i was bringing in the boxing gloves and i was beating up everyone on the team mm-hmm. so one day he was in there in the wrestling room and i put on the gloves and i knocked his ass out that's hilarious that's hilarious <laughs> he went to the box yeah so I, and i've always i've always wondered this too is that how you like it's a two part question, I guess. How did you get break into the Hammer House group? And was it through wrestling or Ohio State through that connection? Not, to not at all, man. I, oh, I uh, I broke into the in, into the Hammer House when Mark Holman happened to be in Las Vegas training for a fight. Mm-hmm. And uh, I the first day he was at he was at uh, a jiu jitsu school, Mark Lehman's jiu jitsu school, mm-hmm. Cobra Kai. Oh, and I, I noticed he was waiting for a cab. So the next day, I'm like, man, fuck that. Uh, where, where are you staying? And he was staying at the Palace Station. So I just started giving him a ride home. Wow. And then, I, then I asked him to corner me for my UFC fight. He cornered me, and it didn't go so well. And then uh, he saw I was down and out, and he got me in pride. And I was a member of the Ham House ever since then. Yeah. I mean, I think people, at least I forgot, like, how young you were. Like you were very successful, very young. I mean, it, meaning you got to the UFC. My, my first UFC fight was I was 24. My yeah. first MMA fight was basically in the UFC. I got a short notice fight, and I was brought in as a boxer. I, I, I was 10 and 0 in amateur boxing, and and, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 seven and 0 in kickboxing. I think that was pro. That was pro. Kickboxing was pro, and I was 10 and 0. And when I got in the UFC, all that became. Uh, like official and I couldn't box anymore. Amateur. I, w- I was trying to, I was boxing, you know? Sure. So when I was in the UFC, I was like, fuck it. I'm in the UFC now. So let's do yeah. this shit. But I, I, I was a last minute, you know, UFC number 30 replacement fighter. I was the local guy. They always have a local guy get their ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah. And they had me down and they had, and they had me down as a boxer or something. Yeah. Kickboxer. So I was the guy who was supposed to get my ass kicked. But they I had no idea. Man. First what? of all, it's crazy how things like that work out. That's like fate. And I would have been better off boxing. Oh, fuck me up. <laughs> I, would have been, I would have been way better off boxing. I, I know some kids from Long Island and some other guys that was better than that that made some real big money. The, the worst thing I ever did was going to, in the UFC as far as fighting goes, you know. 
I would have been better off if I was boxing, made, made a lot more money, you know, good looking white guy, marketable yeah. knockout puncher with fast hands. Yeah. I mean, I would have done way better. I would have been way better off. Yeah. It, it, it's looking back. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you, who's to say, but maybe you're probably right. I mean, the money wise, yeah. there might have probably been a lot, a lot of money there, but you, you were so marketable and in a time where the UFC was really under the new ownership of Zufa. So it was taking off. And for a while, did, did, it felt like they really liked you. You were a star. Like I, I was a star, but I was a star on my own, on my, on my own. You know what I mean? They, they weren't, doing anything for me it didn't help me with with anything you know what i mean i, I just i just love pro wrestling i love the showmanship and right. you know what i mean I, I liked Vinny pazienza yeah Vinny. And, and that was like how you know, i basically took his gimmick you know what i mean yeah so i was and uh yeah i mean i i did good i got on the video game cover and ultimate mm-hmm. knockouts but i mean that, that was all my fucking doing yeah you know, nobody helped me do that sure Sure, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. It's something you were doing. Before. Not like today, where they would have definitely went behind me and pushed me, and they they almost didn't like that me calling guys out and saying shit. They were like Joe Silva's a fucking dork, and he didn't like that shit. You know, he always wanted to get me beat. Yeah, no one know, has ever had anything nice to say about that guy, and I've never yeah. met him, so I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. But no one has ever had anything nice to say about him on this show. No, he's all right. He gave me a hundred bucks once on Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. There you go. <laughs> All right, go. Yeah, go Joe Silver. Um, so wait, let me go backwards just a little bit though, because there was a lot going on in Pride too. You know, you you were you had a lot of success in Pride, and again, you were young, part of the Hammer House. But I want to ask you this specifically, man. The Shogun fight with Coleman afterwards. You were like the first one in that ring with Coleman, have his back during that melee. Man, what was that experience like? It was awesome. They just lucky random wasn't there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who would have clean? Who would have clean house? Me, Coleman, and his old man did did good though. That it, is it was true. Great. <laughs> his dad was there, wasn't he? Yeah. Wow. yeah, the, yeah. the shoe box was like you know it was a bunch of wild guys from Brazil and and in Japan they were doing whatever the fuck they wanted. They're running around and kicking people's asses and co- causing havoc. It wasn't like the UFC where where everyone's under the Dana White's thumb. It, it, mm-hmm. it was really like the wild wild west of pride. Right, right. And uh. You know, I, I missed that, and that, and, and that, that that's like was the highlight of the sport in, in my mind. You know, oh, really it's big doesn't... now, and it's on main TV. But it was better back then, as far as just the baddest motherfuckers in the world were getting on a plane and going to Tokyo to see who you see, who, see who the toughest was. Yeah, you know, very limited rules. What was the experience in Japan like for you? Did you enjoy it there? Yeah, I loved it. You know, and I had the opportunity to go back, and unfortunately, I messed it up. But uh, yeah, I loved it. You know, the fans, the fans are great. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was awesome. It, it, it was like going in a when you got off that plane, you were like in a, a different world. Everybody, you know, nobody really knew the UFC guys here. A, l- a little bit, you know, a little bit in the casinos and stuff. But when I got off the plane in Japan, everybody knew me. I was famous. You know what I mean? It, it, it was amazing. What a get trip. off the plane. Yeah, you, you know, you're a regular guy, and then you get off the plane, and, you, and, you're, and you're a superstar. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I would say like, like like not like Conor McGregor, but but real big. I mean, Mark Holman was the first Pride Openweight Grand Prix champion. I mean, he was he was the Hoist Gracie of Japan MMA, and going with him, I I just had the fans on my side immediately. You know, with Randleman, in, and it, you know, it was a great experience. Did they treat you pretty well? I mean, I, there's always some big brother, little brother stuff, you know, but did they take you in pretty well? They, they, yeah, I mean the fans and, and stuff were great. They, 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 they treated me great. They were unbelievable. They liked watching Japanese get their ass kicked. They like watching their countrymen get beat up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then as far as the promotion, yeah, I mean they, they treated you like professional athletes with respect. They didn't talk shit about you. Mm-hmm. It was just it was a different time then. Like like they, they they made you feel like you were actually a superstar or some or somebody. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So after Pride, then you, you went in transition back to the UFC and you had some. I went to Strike Force. I went to Strike Force. That's right. I, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about Strike Force there? I almost skipped over that. Yeah. For, for a while, yeah. Like after Pride, unfortunately, Strike Force bought my fucking contract. So really? all, all the other guys got to go, got to go to, got to go to the UFC and mm-hmm. I was stuck in fucking fucking strike force where i really didn't want to be i wanted to be in the ufc you know what i mean i lived in las vegas 
I'm going to the fights in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and, sure. and that's where I wanted to be. You know what I mean? So I, I was basically st- stuck in no man's land for a while. So, so every big fight card that was going against the UFC back then, I, I was on. You know what I mean? Right. I was I, I was against Shamrock when he was a champion. I was against Joe Riggs when he won uh, that the, the, their Ultimate Fighter they had that one year the Bellator Ultimate Fighter. Right. Uh, I, I fight. I fought all. The, I, Every big promotion uh, that pro elite shit, every pro fight that wasn't UFC, I was headlining the other card. It was a really interesting time in the sport, and and Frank Shamrock talked about it a little bit on a previous show. But it was like you were a hot free agent, right? And it, like, yeah, you were able to kind of like you will never see that again, probably. No, I, I was making forty to sixty thousand dollars bouncing around. You know what I mean? Fighting on New Year's Eve in Japan. I mean, it, it was great cash, but mm-hmm. you know. At the end of the day, you're better off being UFC and making that big money. But 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 it, it was get rich quick scheme. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And they did, and you were able to headline, and that's important. Yeah, right. I was the star. I was the star. One championship. Right. I was the headline. I was the headline in, in Japan. I was the headline, and and you know, in New Year's Eve in, in Japan, it was, um, on uh, what the fuck was it? Ryzen, not Ryzen. What was it before? What was it before Ryzen? Before Ryzen. So, before- uh, not K one. Sengoku or some shit, whatever it was. Yeah, maybe I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it was not. They kept changing. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but okay. So, story and fights, right there, man. Huge fights. Yeah, Huge I was the head. I was the headline of one too when I fought there. Yeah, yeah, I was in Asia for a while, you know. Right, right. Uh, well, I mean, let's touch on that, man. Like, you've been somebody who's been kind of um, – you've lived a real fighter lifestyle, and, like, you've had to be kind of a nomad. You've had to go to this gym, to this gym. You've had to chase them from here to there. What kind of a toll does that take, like, personally on a relationship, a family, right? Well, it ruins your marriage and shit. So, but anyway, I never wanted to get married anyway. Fuck that. But uh, it, ruins your, it ruins marriages and shit. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, it must. Big no, beast. Yeah. Uh, what were you going to say? I, I would say the only other fighter who, who's basically had, had a career similar to mine, he, he was definitely more successful at the end, was Alistair Overeem. He was bouncing to K1, True. To, to, you know, to, to Bellator, to Strike Force, to the, mm-hmm. but then he got in the UFC, you know? And yes. Yeah. yeah. He was able to end kind of that last two contracts with the UFC. In the UFC, it was good. He made, yeah, he set, set himself up for life. Yeah, de- right. definitely good for him. Yeah. You know, it's so it's, it's, it's a shame because your weights, even though you sort of fluctuate at weight classes, you know, 170 and above and stuff, they're always the most. 185 was my best weight. 170 was bullshit. Yeah. Well, tell me about that. Yeah. Like 170 was, I mean, I mean, whatever, man, 170 was everybody else is doing, doing supplements. And I was trying to get my wife pregnant for 10 years. So that's why I was fighting 170. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? It it is what it is. Everybody else is doing the magic shit. Right. And fucking, I was trying to get my wife pregnant for ten years. Sure. So uh, other than other than other than you know, one eighty five was my weight. You know. Yeah. I, I yeah. wrestled. I wrestled. I wrestled. Fucking. I wrestled. Fucking. Uh. Uh. One 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 ninety seven in college. You know. One eighty four. Wow. One seventy seven. My senior year. One seventy was. I was all fucked up. I, I should never have fought that weight. You know. I had. I, I kind of like. For, the, for those 10 years, I was kind of like Vito Belfort, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But still fucking competitive, you know what I mean? For sure, very competitive. That that was the crazy thing about 170, because at first it was like, oh, Baroni, he found his way here. Maybe all the time he was too big, you know? And, and as a fan on the peripheral, I was like, oh, this is going to solve any cardio issue he may have or anything. Like, this is the no. solution. And- I was just slower and weaker. Well, I, you know, it's just smaller, <laughs> smaller, slower, and weaker. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It, it, yeah. It's it, the effect that it, as of- time went on, you know, that's what happened. But, but before that, I was fucking big and strong, as tough as anybody. Oh, I mean, well, you were always competitive. I don't want to say, I mean, you were, and you always had power, always had power, like, and not just that scary one punch power. Like, you, you, you had like a Ferrari gas tank, man. That's who you are. Like, I imagine you wrestled the same way. I imagine. Yeah, I had the, the pin the guy in the first round. You know what I mean? The same thing with my boxing career. I got a knockout in the first round. Or, you know, there's different kind of athletes. Exactly. I would never want to be the fucking kind of guy that's boring, like a John Fitch type guy that has to be in there the whole time and mm-hmm. fucking go five rounds. You know what I mean? I, I, I want to be an exciting killer anyway. That was my personality. I yeah. never wanted to be a guy to fucking wear guys out like a Randy Couture. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. I wanted to fucking kill guys. I wanted, I wanted to be everyone to be afraid of me, you know? Like right. Vito Belfort, he came out. 
like Vandalay Silva. You know what I mean? L- like Mike Tyson. Right. Yeah. The killers, the terrifying, that's the what, lion. That's what, right. Right. I understand. Ferraris, you know, Ferraris. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. And and you fought like that your whole career. So, man, and, and I'm skipping way ahead here, but like, I'm just like, we're talking. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll circle back when yeah. <laughs> bare, bare knuckle fighting, man. Like, box. yeah, that's bullshit, man. That, that promoter's a dildo. Mm-hmm. I, I was supposed to fight that. I was supposed to fight uh, uh, Diego Alves. Mm-hmm. I was training at uh, Jackson Wink in a high mm-hmm. altitude. I was, in, I was in great shape, and he, and he pulled me. He pulled me the last minute, that idiot. That guy's a fucking moron. What a shame, man. It would have been, it was so exciting. And, uh, yeah. and, you know, I mean, I was excited to see it for sure. I was in great shape. I was training. That's a really good camp over there. You know what I mean? There's a lot of bums in that camp because mm-hmm. anybody can go there. But, yeah. but, but the top guy's good. You know what I mean? And I was, yeah. was getting some good training over there. Yeah, well, and, and that reminds me too. Like, do you, you, you know, you were a part of a lot of different camps. And I mean, this stuff from way back when, you know, Hammer House, you visited Team Quest, you went all the way to AK. Yeah. And it's I mean, I, Van, I trained with Vandalay Silva even after the big run. I've trained, look, I was living in Thailand, training in Thailand, fighting. Right. Like, like, I don't think any fighter has more boxing fights, more Muay Thai fights, has done as well in grappling. You know, I'm the North American grappling champion. I, I mm-hmm. won that open d- division. Back in the day, the yeah. Naga. I mean, I, I think I'm the most. I'm, I'm a two-time All-American in college. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm the most successful athlete in MMA, in 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 the outside fighting sports. I don't think anyone has competed in the individual sports like I have. I mean, I was just fighting in Thailand before this pandemic. Oh wow, wow. Well, you're right. You know I mean, so I, don't, I, I don't. I mean, I mean, maybe Anderson Silva fought Muay Thai and he was good, but he didn't fucking wrestle in college and he didn't do fucking win jujitsu championships. Correct. Maybe Dam- Damian Maya was a fucking great jiu-jitsu guy, but he ain't knocking nobody out in Thailand. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. So as far as the most trained, skilled person, I, I believe I'm not. I've always been on a quest. I've, I've gone everywhere around the world to train with the best. Yeah. And I've even trained in Russia with Fedor back in the wow. day when Bodo went there. I, I was in Russia. And, I mean, Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks. So do, w- with that, would you want to coach? Would you want to train? Eventually, yeah. Eventually, you know. Mm-hmm. Eventually. So do you? I love. I love. Fight left? You think? I got a couple left in me. I got a couple left in me. I've been fucking training hard. Yeah. I'm in, fucking, I'm in good shape right now. I'm back up in size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I saw you're full. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. um, what, what, what? MMA or kickboxing or just where an opportunity presents itself? Whatever I can get. Maybe, yeah. maybe, you know, bare knuckle, MMA, or, 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 or kickboxing, or I'm going to head back to Thailand once okay. this pandemic. So I just like to fight. Everybody's different, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Yeah, some people are born fighters, like, and that's okay. Like, I like fighting, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's fun. I, I like training. I like getting in really good shape. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like that lifestyle. I, I understand. And, what, you know, when I'm injured or out of shape, too, I'm not happy. I don't feel like miserable. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's metal too. So much of it's metal. You posted something on Instagram. I'm going to share later today, right. but uh, it was a, po- it was, it was a picture. Maybe I won't. I'll see too. I'll, I'll seem too fanboy, but it's you flexing with your shirt off. But the, what you read, wrote in the caption made a lot of sense to me. You were like, you know, a, a strong body doesn't just reflect hard work. It reflects a strong mind. And that's true. Like it takes years, takes dedication, takes, Man, it takes nutrition. It takes all that. It takes everything. It takes knowledge. It takes, you know what I mean? Yeah, it takes knowledge. I mean, like I see all these guys, you know what I mean? Like like, like these idiots, like going to a strength and conditioning coach. Even when I was at Jackson, I see John Jones go, going to a strength and conditioning coach. But what the fuck does that fat motherfucker know about punching? You know what I mean? That fat motherfucker knows about deadlifting, but he right. don't know shit about fighting. Right. You know what I mean? Somebody like me who's trained, at the highest level, no, you know what I mean? He should be asking me how to fucking get strong. You shouldn't be asking some fucking jabroni that from the, some fucking gym in New Mexico that, that has some Fugazi powerlifting records. You know what I mean? Some yeah. steroid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I understand. They're a specialist in one thing. How is that applicable to your sport? I yeah, right. It. How are you going to apply that? A fighter, yeah. right. A fighter who's been successful in that. Like if you wanted to fucking – know about baseball i would ask uh one of the guys i would i would ask jose canseco i would you know jose yeah. canseco or mark mcguire home run hitter. I'd ask some fucking dumb power lifter yes you know I mean? totally yeah i some understand slow fat white guy you know what i mean yeah yeah 
So to that end, do you think like um, throughout your career, like you've had good mentorship, right? Are there any, any other fighters? Yeah, I mean, Mark Coleman, I mean, yeah. he, 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 he put the strength back in my mindset that strength is important. Because I mean, strength is the best move. I mean, really, if you if you weigh stronger than somebody, they can't do nothing to you. I mean, a girl, a gr- well, what do you weigh? You know, a girl ain't gonna fucking a black belt chick ain't gonna choke you out because you're just way stronger. Mm-hmm. You're way more physical. Yeah, yeah. I think I heard him say once, like, strength's a technique. Like, it's the best can- move. It's yeah, the best move. It's smart. And, and you got and you got to learn how to be strong. You know what I mean, it's a technique to it. There's training for it, and, right. and it's the best move. You punch hard. You, it only takes one. Right. Right. Yeah. So what was it like for you um, training with someone like a Kevin Randleman who had like just athleticism? I mean, I'll never know, but like, I, I came from like a wrestling he was super rapid. Like he was super fast. Yeah, so was, fast, right? Yeah. yeah. I, w- I would say between Coleman and, and Randleman, I, I was more in the middle. Mm-hmm. I, I was the middle. I had I, 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 the, the power of Coleman and the speed of Randall a little less of each. You know what I mean? I, I was the middle guy. You had some fights where you were um, – I don't know if personally everything was just peaking for you, but like, like you're having Tanner fights. Some of them were like, man, you were firing on all cylinders, like just dangerous. You were quick. You were, you could, you were jumping like Randleman a little bit sometimes. Yeah, he, like, yeah. What is going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I looked up to those guys, you know, yeah. growing up, I looked up to those guys. So I was so happy to be on that team. When yeah. I was in high school, Randleman and, and Colmore were in college wrestling. And then when I was in college wrestling, those guys were in the UFC. So right. I looked up to them in fucking wrestling because they were buff guys, strong guys, and that's what right. I wanted to be, a power right. guy. And right. then when and then all of a sudden they're fighting, I'm like, fuck, I'm going to do this now. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, the, you know, and, and, and all right, so going back forward. So after Strike Force, kind of be elite XC, let's say I'll say after your free agent time, going back to the UFC, you kind of had that second chapter there. But it was, that was bullshit. That was, was fucking cool, bullshit, right? Right? Yeah, was, I, didn't, I, didn't get, I didn't get a good shot there. That, that was fucking bullshit. Joseph could suck my dick, little faggot motherfucker. I mean, it, what? I mean, you got you got hurt, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, but whatever. That wasn't a good shot. Is it? The, the, there's guys in the UFC still now. You know, you know what I mean? That could never hold my jock from that era. Mm-hmm. It's it's Fighting. crazy. Some have survived. Like it, it is crazy. Yeah, but. But I mean, they were average guys because they were quiet and stayed under the table. They they were able to keep fighting, and making money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They were just guys on the card. They weren't. They're not stars. They're just fillers. Yeah. Quiet, quiet fillers. Yeah. Have you heard from other fighters? I mean, I just gotta believe in my heart somewhere down deep. Like Conor McGregor, you inspired him. Like I got you got or or, or Tito, you had to co-inspired him at that same time. Like you were one of the first with the, the persona, the Vinny Pie. Yeah. Like it makes sense to me. Right like, now, everybody did it ten years later. To be a right, star, you know, I was I, I was ahead of the fucking game, but they, were. they weren't they weren't so behind it back then. You know, they weren't they weren't so behind it. They didn't know how to take it. Now, now they love it. Obviously, they're yeah. telling guys how, how to give post fight interviews. You know, I wrote the book on post fight interviews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You were exciting. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Fun. yeah right. and, and you had, you were dynamic fighter. Like Brony was not somebody that's going to get finished. You know, like he's not a quitter. He's going right. to no matter what all heart. And, and, and I'll say this, your some of your post fight interviews are captivating, man. They're, they're hard to be, you know, and Thanks. anyone that's ever competed understands. <sighs> That's why we love you. <laughs> we love you for the knockouts as much as those for me anyway. Thank you. For me. Oh, I put everything I put everything into every fight I had, you know. I, mean, yeah. I had some fights where I wasn't as prepared, but when, when the bell rang, never once did I find a soft spot. Never never once did I not give it my all. Never once did I tap out. You know what I mean? Right. I, 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 I you know, I, I fought to my last breath every time and uh I, I gave it all I got. Every fight I was in was an honest fight. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. your record speaks for it. And I've seen them all. I, I haven't seen all the kickboxing uh, or that early boxing, but I've seen every MMA for sure. Um, I, and I'll see whatever comes next, you know? Um, yeah, but that's true. That's a true testament to like your warrior spirit there. I think that's what's so cool to me about why I'm fascinated now about Japan and, and organizations over. Yeah, I'm actually trying to get back to, you know what I mean? I, I like to have my, I like to close the book maybe in Japan rather than in Thailand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather fucking maybe get over there back and rise and maybe, yeah. you know, 
have one little more chapter to Hammer House over there. You know, co- 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 the way I see it, Coleman fucking started it, you know, putting over Tagala and mm-hmm. basically, you know, and being the first Grand Prix champion. Yeah. I think uh, it would be nice to close my chapter there. Oh, it'd be beautiful. Coleman in your corner. Yeah. Get him out there too. Oh, it'd be, oh man. <laughs> it'd be amazing. Let's do a New Year's Eve card. For yeah. Nostalgia. Oh That's man, it would be uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Rise and get behind it. I'm gonna post this as a separate clip. It'd be an amazing Thanks. card. It'd be beautiful. Uh, as a fan, what a bigger treat and testament. And I agree. Like Coleman's a, a forefather there. As, as important yeah. as, as the Japanese. I mean, he was the. I mean, he was the first UFC heavyweight champion. He was the guy that got all the wrestlers into fucking MMA. You know. Yes. Unfortunately, Dan Severn wasn't as captivating, but Mark Coleman was captivating with that headless earning. Correct. And then he resurrected his career in, in in Japan. He won that first tournament. So really, he's like the Hoist Gracie mm-hmm. of, of J- Japanese MMA. He was the first yeah. champion. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Forefather. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. One of the goats. Um, but you too, man. And and again, like it's a testament. It's so cool that you were there to see that firsthand because only you and a handful of people were. You know, which is, you know, it's awesome that you had that life experience, but you also were fighting too. So you, you know, yeah. you were able to be the fighter and take that back. So what was it like later on? Were you, were you able to take other fighters? I think like you mentored, I, I mean, uh, J- John Copenhager, right? War, you know, yeah, War, War Machine. Some other guys yeah. like later- Alex Carroll Alexis. I've had, I've had, I've had a, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of guys, you know, yeah. Kendall Grove, the, Kendall. All, all those guys, all those guys treated under me in Las Vegas, their whole crew. Yeah, you know, I got them all, you know, uh, Joe Daddy Stevenson. I, I made the calls and got them all in the Ultimate Fighter. You know, I was still friends with Dana. Yeah. And I was saying, I got these kids here and I got War Machine. All, all those guys are in the Ultimate Fighter. Oh, wow. Kendall Grove, Joe Daddy Stevenson. Yeah. You know, I mean, those are all the guys I beat up on every day. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, that's a crazy thing, too, because there's you uh, and there's videos. Like at one time, you had to be top 10 in the world to be in the UFC. Yeah, you had to be. There weren't a bunch of guys calling about top 10 guys. If you weren't top 10, you weren't in the UFC. Yeah. So, like, all these other guys were fighting in Hawaii in, in uh, Super Brawl or fighting in K- uh, King of the Cage mm-hmm. or fighting these other shows. And I, I was the I, – I got them into the UFC. Yeah. You know I mean, mean it, it had to be good. So, me vouching for those guys. Jay Haran, who won, uh, you know, IFL in a bunch of tournaments. He was from a New York wrestler. A bunch of those guys I vouched for. and yeah. basically got them in as, you know, me vouching for them. I mean, you changed every all their lives. They all got an opportunity that changed their lives. Changed the fight at least. Yeah. Especially, got, I mean, all of them. But like a guy like Kendall, who's still actively competing. Like they're, right. st- they're still going. You know, I mean, yeah. He, I, I brought I brought him to like before the UFC PS, you know, the UFC Performance Institute. Mm-hmm. We would just go and uh, Gordon Beer's Brewing mm-hmm. Company had a gym, Lorenzo's private gym, mm-hmm. and I would bring all those guys in there and spar and beat them up, and all that shit was on film, and. uh and you know what I mean? And I, and I would say, go look at the film. I vouched for him. I got him in the UFC. But I, so, I beat their ass. I'm so glad you said that. I was on YouTube. And this was like a year ago. I hope this is still out there. But this was uh, footage of you sparring in the UFC gym. Boxing, Chuck Liddell. Chuck yeah. Liddell. Yep. Oh, my God, dude. That's, I was, paid that's when he was getting ready for, for What? I would have paid money for that. That was a ticket. That's, that's when he was getting ready for Rampage. Wow. Rampage. And he went over there. And then after that, I'm like, fuck it. I want to go over there. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> and then I went over there and I beat the, beat those guys up. And then I had an opportunity to come back and be on an ultimate fighter or just keep fighting in Japan. And I'm like, in my mind back then, I was like, fuck the ultimate fighter. Matt Sarah ended up winning the being the UFC champion. But I was like, yeah. fuck the ultimate fighter. I'm so much better than that. Why would I want to be on an ultimate fighter? I'm in fucking pride. Yeah. And Dana and those guys are trying to tell me, no, this is the move. Blah blah blah. I mean, wow. I don't know. I mean, I understand why you made the <laughs> you know decision. What I mean? you made. I understand why you made that decision at that time. Yeah, totally. yeah. You're yeah. already headlining. You're already a star, and then this is right. a show. The whole premise is the show is to get a contract to be a superstar. Right. Yeah. So right. at that time, it's like, man, Dana, I'm already doing that, and I've already fought in the UFC. Yeah, it was a bunch of losers. You know what I mean? It was no. a bunch. Or, I mean, or really, unknowns, we'll say, you know. No, a bunch of guys that got beaten in the UFC already. Like Matt Sarah yeah. was oh. all those guys were in the UFC. You know what I mean? I felt like I surpassed them. I'm in pride. You know yeah. what I mean? Pride was pride was above the UFC. You're, and so that I was like, why, why would I want to go back? 
Yeah. I I mean, I understand why you made that decision. In my mind. Yeah. yeah in my mind. Yeah. Which is so crazy. <laughs> it's funny, this fight business, man. The unknowns, all these things you'll never know unless you yeah. see somebody and talk to them. I made a lot of those dumb moves. Well, I mean, who knows? You know, it's it's like you can't live in regret, you know. No, I know. You also got to do so many amazing things and got to yeah, do yeah, yeah. awesome stuff. And you and, and a lot of those guys, too, they came and it was a meat grinder. You know, they were in and they were out quick. And then they never yeah, had yeah. the opportunity again. You were still able to capitalize on being a free agent and headline. Right. So, I mean, like there's a credit, there's a testament to that, too. You know, um, yeah. man. You, yeah. You were one of the first to really market, have the persona be the badass sort of persona gimmick. And it, yeah. And kind of translate that into to a brand. I mean, if I, I mean, I mean, I still think to this day, if I would have came back, I would have fucking killed Rich Franklin. I mean, you know what I mean? I I really think I would have fucking smashed him. I mean, and, and, but they wanted to have the math teacher, the, the good all-American, you know, mm -hmm. white guy, fucking nice, nice guy teacher. He had good you know crossover, I mean? yeah. And I was, was ab absolutely player. opposite. You know what I mean? I was yes. gangbanger, street you were fighter. Con you know? yeah, you were Conor McGregor before Conor McGregor. You, you right. Were yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun, exciting person. Every single guy, 20 to 35, wanted to be that guy. Accent. knocking out guys picking up girls living in i mean like you were living it for us so just know that thanks thanks <laughs> good. I'm, glad, I'm glad you appreciate that i was of trying course. my best of course yeah well i so you know too so i'll just say this too you got to, you had a lot of amazing fights but you know one thing too i think is pretty pretty amazing about you you know and your I think life I still got all my head that's pretty amazing but other than that well it's pretty quick <laughs> man you still got yeah. some. Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing head of hair quaff um so being that you were able to kind of bounce around different camps you trained with everybody it's yeah I, i've trained with i've trained with the best when evan tan had beat me to clinch i was the first ufc fighter to ever go to tiger muay thai and now there's a bunch of fighters training there but i was the first one you know what i mean yeah. everywhere the the, the the fighting was you know where the new mecca was i was training when ak was the best right. i was at ak when, right. when las vegas was the best and mark Lehman's gym and those guys mm -hmm. i was i was there Wherever you know, when I was I was just at Jackson's. I've yeah. been at every great camp when it was at its peak. So and I've the best my whole yeah. career. So with that, you've you've trained with them, you've seen them, or you've fought them. Who is like in your mind, like the greatest ever? Who's the guy you've seen and you're like that guy? Like if I have to pick, that's the guy. Me. You. I love it. Yeah, I, it should I, be right. Yeah. After you, like as a fan. I'm or, sure. Yeah. Man, that's, that's, a, that's a tough, that's tough. That's a tough like, call. Yeah, and you don't want to hurt feelings, too, so I get that. Mark Holman. Mark Holman. Cobrana. Yeah. Got to say it. Yeah. Mo mo most successful, done the most, got the most accolades. Right, right. But, you know, maybe not the, maybe not the best all-around fighter. Yeah. Well, it just sort of evolved a little past him, but I hate that that's part of his story because he did it all to your point. Right. And he had that resurrection in Japan when right. he went it over there that like, I think some people don't talk about it enough and that's huge. It was a tournament and, and, and like, came, then he came back and beat Bonner's ass. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Mean, Later in life. He right? beat, the, beat the ultimate fighter guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Dude. Yeah. He beat the old, young guy. old as fuck, you know, over 44 years old. He beat the ultimate fighter guy in his prime. Right. So yeah. He got his hip replaced after that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, I know, man. Fucked up the whole time. His hip was bothering him in pride, I remember. So I, I interviewed um, Mark Kerr a couple weeks ago, and he said that in college, when he and Coleman would train together and wrestle, mm -hmm. he said Coleman was, he said that Coleman just was 100% mentally more tough than him. And no matter what, he was like, one more, one more, one more. And he just had him beat mentally because Coleman was the toughest human being just mentally he ever knew, he ever met. Yeah. And I'm like, of course, <laughs> I believe that, you know? Yeah, that's how he resurrected his career, you know? That's how he resurrected his career. Mm -hmm. So are you still close to this? Do you guys stay in contact? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great, man. It's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, so what, you know, what are you doing now? Kind of transitioning a little, like physically with the pandemic to stay in shape. Cause you're, you look I'm training. Like I, I, I'm training. I'm training pretty hard. I got some pro wrestling. Oh, okay. Fun. On, uh, Atlantic city, you know, which okay. is pretty cool. I, I, a new hotel that uh, showboat, they've redone it. And it's pretty cool. Cause that's where I had my first uh, UFC fight in Atlantic city. That would, that's perfect for you. 
Yeah, my first UFC fight was Atlantic City. Yeah. So I'm actually going to bring my old girlfriend that I was dating back because I'm back in New York. When I was <laughs> dating back when I was in uh, first in the UFC in college. Wow. We're going to go check it out. Yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And I this dude's ass, this big, this big white honky dude just in the ICW NHB. It's a, okay. it's a, uh, it's a no-hold bar to, uh, and then they promotion kind of like the ECW back in the day, real hardcore blood buddy and shit. Okay. The guys hit the little weapons. So it should be pretty cool. Man, that's great. Do you know the date? Fuck. I can Two look weeks, three, three weeks. Yeah. I see okay. I'll put it on the clip and I'll look it's it up. It's a big, it's a big, it's a big event, man. Damn. Yeah, I can't wait. That's For gonna be awesome. wrestling. Yeah, it's it's like it's like the new ECW. Remember ECW? Oh yeah, big yeah, big time. Yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh, yeah. that. All hardcore shit. Well, you know, and it's it's funny you went there because I, and I'm glad you said that, man, because you, I, I grew up a big pro wrestling fan too. And like, Me again, too. you're perfect as a pro wrestling. Like you, if you weren't a UFC fighter, the only thing I, I would have ever. Pro wrestling heel. Pro wrestling. Pro, a million percent. Yeah. A million. Yeah, I'm a great pro wrestler, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I'm, I'm, I'm the same character in, that as I am in UFC and it's fucking definitely over. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah, of course it is. It's perfect. Yeah, man. Awesome! I can't wait to see it. A hundred percent, I'll watch. I'll figure out how I can get a ticket or stream. It's on. It's it's on. It's on. It's on. Fucking stream. Oh, okay. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. That's something that I feel like you were built for. Did you have any opportunities to pro wrestle earlier? I, 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 I had a couple. You know, I had a couple. I was, but you know, when I when I first got over to Pride, they wanted me to be in New Japan, but I resigned the Pride contract. Mm-hmm. I, I, I uh, I, and then I worked for Anoki a little bit, and and then I had some uh, the uh, what's the new one? The E E E the E C W. What what is it? What is the new oh, one? Right uh, now? Any or she's A E W. A E W. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was in talks with them. I'm really good friends with Taz. He's a New oh, York guy. You know Taz. He's yeah, a wrestler. He's a New York guy. He's my buddy. Yeah, New York. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, he's big time in that. But then I had a little beef with that uh. With that Cody Rhodes homo. Oh no! So, no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wrong, wrong, wrong guy. To, wrong guy to fucking yeah. stop bullying. Although it'd be good heat. That'd be a good. I would love to. No, see. I, I mean, I would love to bring a bunch of fucking, a bunch of fucking. I mean, I, what I'd like to do is bring a bunch of my fucking UFC fighter guys that are into pro wrestling now and come over and make an invasion, kind of like the uh, the NWO did oh, back man. in the day. Maybe with a bunch of UFC guys, but I just need this fucking Cody dummy to fucking uh, <laughs> open his ears so up. Much. You know what I mean? I'll bring I'll bring over a couple of guys, maybe you Bonner, have enough. you Ken Shamrock, maybe Bonner. Uh, who's that other know. guy? Who's that other guy that that uh that guy who walks out like uh Dan Severn and shit? What's that guy's name? I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I was Tom thinking- Lola, Tom yes. Lola. Yes, yes. Tom, yeah, that me, awesome. Tom Lola, Riddle, Bonner, we'd fucking Riddle. take over that shit. Man, you know, if, Riddle, yeah. And then, man, if you yes, and then since we're dreaming, throw a little Brock Lesnar in there. Fuck yeah, then we smash. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah, I, this is like I yeah. Per, per wrestling is like a, if there is a second chapter, I think that'd be great for you. I love it, man. I love it. I'm I'm pretty good. At it. I mean, I, I've trained with D'Lo Brown. Oh, I've D-Lo. trained with Disco Inferno, okay. I, Mike Modest. I've had the best trainers. I, I've been training pro wrestling since maybe man it seems it goes quick maybe almost 10 years now i'm, I'm definitely a good pro wrestler i mean I, I i did a lot of matches in china you know a lot, a lot of people don't see him I, i've done some pro yeah. wrestling yeah that's great that's great man there's so many matches to be made you versus yeah. shamrock there's like Ken shamrock there's some matches out there like you said tom lawler man yeah riddle yeah, this yeah. Is good stuff. yeah, it'll be awesome. It'll be awesome. Yeah, it'll be really good. I'll kick all their asses just yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> uh, so we're coming up on time. Um, you know, I guess uh, I, I kind of ask everyone this. It's super cliche and generic, but um, I'm really, I actually love everyone's answers. They're all pretty unique. Do you have any kind of words of advice you give people, uh, words of wisdom, anything you like, you like to even say to yourself, a good saying you like to share? Yeah. Fuck, everybody's life's different, man. Basically, yeah. basically, uh, fucking, uh, damn, what is my fucking saying? Uh, I want to do one for you. Tell me if this helps. Like, Baroni to me, and we kind of touched on it. You're yeah. a guy that's like 
to me as a fan, like you're all heart. I feel like you're very honest. You're an honest, you're so you're sincere. Never say die. Never say die is basically my never fucking gimmick. Die. That's my yeah. gimmick. That's it, never man. Say die. Ne- That's instead it. of never give up, never say die. Yeah, never say die. That's yeah. it, man. That's your words of wisdom. So next, generic got to ask you, you're better, never say die. That's Work. it. Yeah. Uh, that's great, man. Phil, this is, this is awesome. Um, anything, uh, I guess, where can people reach you? You know, uh, do, you know, man, Instagram, Phil Baroni underline NYBA, Phil Baroni underline or, or my Twitter, Phil Baroni. Okay. Perfect, man. Thank yeah, you I'm, take, so I'm taking fucking pro wrestling <laughs> bookings. You know what I mean? I, I'm breaking back into the business. It's just fucking ICW NHB. It's fucking check it out, bro. Everybody's bloody. It's fucking hardcore wrestling. Yeah, I'm fighting their biggest best dude. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fucking smash him. Yeah. I had an argument with the promoter already. He, you know he want. You know I'm doing what I want. I'm fucking. I'm not putting this guy over. <laughs> and, and, I'm winning, and I'm winning this fucking match. You know what I mean? I'm winning this fucking match. I'm not fucking going back to Atlantic City and losing my first booking for this promotion. So as bloody as it's got to get, I'm taking this fucking dude out. You know, and then. uh you know, I'm looking to get back maybe in Ryzen. I have some talks with uh, I've been talking uh, Ryzen a little bit, but the, but they, but Japan's not open yet, so you know we'll we'll see. Yeah, but I'm definitely looking to get back in there. It's you know awesome. I, mean? I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see yeah. it, and hopefully after the pandemic opens up, you know, that even happens. bare knuckle that fucker owes me. You know, that Feldman motherfucker, he owes me. I'm. It's such a bummer that that didn't work out. I, I He's a that. fucking bum, that guy. <laughs> crazy yeah it's, it's unfortunate for sure uh well thank you again man this is um no problem yeah hey phil baroni the new york badass true story thank you again phil thanks brother good talking to you man you too